here's Tashi. You don't get to see cats very often here. Particularly Callie tends to hide. She's our girl cat. She's not around. This is the boy. Yeah. <laughs> rub, rub. Here, show him your face. Hi. <laughs> uh, oh, here's somebody. Yeah. I think it's Adam. Where does Joy? Oh. Good morning. Up, oh, hello, kitty. <laughs> you coming to class? Yes, she is. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Now, I, they've changed my um, controls up here, and I keep hitting the wrong one. <laughs> Maybe she's hitting it. <laughs> no, I can't blame. Uh, <laughs> Can't blame cat. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> a new instructor. A new <laughs> instructor, indeed. Cats can teach us much about Tai Chi, I think. <laughs> uh, according to Master Joe, he knows way more than we do. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yep, I'm sure of that. All right, I'll be right back. Uh... How are you, Bill? Okay. <laughs> just okay today, yeah? Yeah, well, you know. Did I, <laughs> I'm did fine. Were you out yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was a good session, though. Uh, <laughs> and I uh, I always try to uh, replicate right away when I got home what we did in class. So I, I think I remembered. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> well, you just do the best you can. Yeah. It takes a while. This this form, um, or that form, <laughs> mm -hmm. is uh, particularly difficult because of its subtlety, I think. Yes. Um, the yang is, is larger and seems somehow easier to grasp, although it it is just as subtle energetically, but... Um, Movement-wise, it's it's a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I mean, starting right from the beginning, uh, Pong, Ji, you know, are, are so understated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So. Ask Joanne. She's been working on it for quite a while. Yeah. Quite a while. <laughs> I like it, though. I like it. So... Um, Joanne, I almost wondered if you'd be here today with the way things are going in our world. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, that means I need more balance, David. That's what I I see. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I think one of the things that I, <laughs> I had a check-in yesterday morning on a meeting, and yeah, it was that kind of question. And I think one, I mean, obviously Tai Chi and the grandkids and other things kind of help with balance. But also the fact that I do this affordable housing work through our community land trust means I've got something other than that craziness to address, right? Something concrete, something yeah. that will improve people's lives on a real basis. So that's important to do. Well, good. And avoid some of the, ignore and avoid some of the craziness that you have no control over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and we certainly don't seem to have much control, do we? Oh, morning, Adam. <laughs> hey, Adam. <laughs> How are the roads out there? They look kind of no, sticky, but they're not bad. No, it's definitely not nice out. I mean, it's no, wet, but yeah, nothing's icing up or or slick right now. Oh, good. Late enough, yeah. If we're lucky. If we're lucky. <laughs> I heard two feet in Buffalo. Glad I don't live near the lake effect. Oh, oh really? Wow. Oh, wow. Yep. Incredible. The, the worst snowstorm I ever drove in was on the way to Buffalo. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long way. Yeah. How are you, Bill? I'm, I'm well. Um, Good. I, I think I have original sound.
connected. We'll see oh. whether the Ting Shaw sounds different today or not. Okay. <laughs> so. Wow, right down to the last vibrations. Yeah. Bravo. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank L you. A little that. different coming out of this minuscule speaker, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it reminds you of it. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So, um, questions, reports, how you doing? What are your problems if you have any? <laughs> <laughs> now there's a question. <laughs> if you have any. I, uh, so during practicing this week, uh, a couple of times I was in a big hurry, but first uh, I, I was moved to practice and I just did six repetitions of each, like we did one time when you were doing it. Uh -huh. And, um, uh, when I do the longer practice, I get bogged up with inconsistencies and mind wandering and things like that. Not, you know, to certain, to it's it always happens. Sometimes less than other times, but doing the sixth thing, I think, could enable me to do the longer thing more consistently. So. Mm. That's a good, interesting. Good thought bill mm -hmm. uh, and also um the more repetitions you do the 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 bigger you make the first uh, four movements the more difficult it is and more demanding physically too uh, not to mention energetically mm -hmm. so um sometimes uh, choosing to do a shorter uh sequence is not a bad idea at all uh, as a matter of fact it's a good idea <laughs> so yeah i think that's a good discovery anyone else have oh well, i'll chime in on that on that uh matter um i sometimes do six or eight you know depending again as bill said the time available uh but i find that um it takes me all of six to get everything sorted out mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to define the flow and the, you know, uh, what seems to be working on that particular day. So mm. uh, I, I always feel better after 10 enduring uh, um, the, uh, the latter end of the 10. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Good. Anything for Joanne or Adam? I don't think anything new. You know, I think last week focusing on the Lagan points, uh, it really does help to judge kind of how how your practice is doing that day. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I found that. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. And when I when I seem to get it right. It seems to um, really also open up the bubbling well in the foot. Uh -huh. That the awareness mm. there is, uh, you know, in the forefront without really any effort or, or intention to have that there. So, mm -hmm. good. So I think think progress. Yeah, that is progress. <laughs> good. Yeah, I would agree with Adam on that. I I noticed that um, myself. Um, I think the other thing is is that at first I was. Um, a bit challenged by the knee exercise, um, in, in, particularly in terms of the kind of around part of it. But it it finally I finally got it. <laughs> so, you know, and it's and it because of the warning because of my knees um, being vulnerable and because of the warning of not doing it, you know, more than five times. It's a little challenging because you can't keep trying to work at it. 
<laughs> like, no, 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 a few more and I'll get it. You know, it's like, no, no, I'll few more tomorrow and I'll maybe get it. I think it, it fine. I think I finally have that. Um, you know, and hopefully I'll lose it. <laughs> uh, Bill Nagel yesterday, uh, in talking about that, um, alerted me to the fact that I hadn't perhaps been as clear as I might have been about that movement of the knee going outside. Uh-huh, right. In that you are pivoting from the quad and the ankle. The knee is not doing any rotating in that movement. So you have to mm -hmm. really be clear about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to rotate the knee, obviously. Knee, right, okay, yep. Yeah, so just just to clarify that point, um, but it is a it is a beneficial exercise for the knee. Anybody else try it this week? Nope. Okay. You don't have. I found to. it when I didn't do it well. It it did. It kind of, yeah, you know, must kind of yeah. There was a kind of different kind of energy. I think so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, let us progress onward, <laughs> as we do. So let's look at bending and stretching the arms and the torso in movement three. Mm. Um, don't know about all of you, but I think I would have to say in the long run, movement three probably was the most challenging of yeah. the movements. Um, so precisely, or previously, we went through how to jiggle your arms to get your fascia to release. Uh, you may remember doing that. So if you're going to get the fascia to release inside your arms, you must mentally put your mind inside your arms and then try and remember what that jiggling was like. So this is saying not to jiggle, but to put your mind inside the arm and feel what that release of the nerves felt like so that you can allow the arm to extend when you recognize that feeling. So just try that for a moment. You don't have to stand up unless you want to. You can do it either standing or, or seated. But just put your arm, one, one arm, really just focus on one arm. And really take a moment to endeavor to put your mind inside your arm. So really feeling inside your arm. And Try to remember that sense of what it felt like to jiggle and release. And see if you can feel that allowing your nerves to release. And that allows the arm then to lengthen out. Now, if you feel like you don't have any sense of what that, that feels like, then take a moment and jiggle the arm. Jiggle it. See if you can get a sense of it's letting go. And then being able to lengthen out. And lengthen in. <laughs> it does both. And then Really see if you can do it without jiggling the arm, but simply putting your mind inside your arm and feeling that sense of the release you found from jiggling and letting that enable you to lengthen.
to get some sense of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good. So stand up. <clears throat> And try it again standing. So f find your basic position, breathe. Sink your chi. And extend your mind through your body and into an arm as you lift it forward. And see if without moving you can get that sense of releasing and activating your nerves. And then allow the arm to lengthen out. And try it again. And you really want to feel for being aware of that release of the nerves. And you feel the nerves have relaxed. Then the arm can lengthen. If you find that it seems as if your arm isn't really lengthening all the way, then keep your mind focused into your arm and see if you can get that sense of release again and allow your arm to continue on out. Remember that stretching is not the same as lengthening. Lengthening is a release. So try this a few times. And during the day when you have a moment, this would be a good thing to do two or three times. It could be either sitting down or standing up. But you want to do this until you're getting the idea of how you can release your body from the inside so it will lengthen. If you can figure out how to release the nerves so that they become very alive, then very gently every time you feel that, And you can allow the arm to lengthen a little bit more. Okay, so relax. You can sit down again for a minute. So, you feel you can get that? A little bit? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. I feel like I can get that sense of uh, the jiggling and the nerves relaxing, but not much actual lengthening in the arm. Mm. So you have to let go. Yeah. 
yeah. e easy for me to say, <laughs> but um, that is that is part of it. How about everyone else? Uh, there, um, playing with it in that way um, it becomes very easy to <laughs> shocking. <laughs> Actually, how close releasing and um, going the wrong way and reaching. <laughs> <laughs> if I tried to uh, assist the, <laughs> the right. opening out with my muscles uh, and my elbow got anywhere close to locked, everything stopped, you know. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, even in, in reverse that way, I, I was able to tell something about the, the releasing. So uh -huh. good. Well, that's. That's a stage of learning about this, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I had that experience of realizing I was stretching, and I realized it just before you said, don't do it. <laughs> so that was good. That's always good when I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm aware. And then you remind us. <laughs> good. Yeah. So with lengthening, I mean, I, I've always felt, especially in my hands, a little resistance to lengthening. You don't want, and you're, so you're trying to get rid of that resistance. Is that a part of the sensation? When when you lengthen, you know, I, I, it's a little bit different from stretching, um, but it's, there's a little resistance there, sort of a. So. And is that, I, I know you want to, it, it has to feel energetic to have it right, but is what, are we trying to let go of that resistance too when we're yes. lengthening or is that and that resistance is your nerves not completely relaxing mm -hmm. mm. interesting yep um and yes um you're not you're not only lengthening the arm you're lengthening all the way through lao gong to through the fingertips yeah yeah, and I, I get that resistance sensation strongly in my hands and not, and I do feel like I'm lengthening, you know, on up through and with, without so much resistance in the bigger joints, I guess. Uh-huh. One of the things to remember and, and um, is that, that lengthening goes right along with bending and stretching. So... Um, now what we're actually moving towards is beginning to bend and stretch the fascia by lengthening. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that <laughs> is by finding that relaxation of the nerves, that releasing of the nerves. And, and indeed you want everything to lengthen out and it goes all the way so um you're one of the things to remember is that what i just said that that uh, lengthening out is also extending or stretching out and lengthening back in is bending in so everything is bending the fingers are bending, the hand is bending, the wrist is bending, the elbow is bending, the shoulder is bending, the scapula is bending. <laughs> I don't know if that will help you or not, but, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it is going all the way through, absolutely. Right. And it, it's a very counterintuitive um, awareness because that's not the way that we talk about doing things in our culture because we talk about doing it we can make it happen mm. you can do anything if you try hard enough um, and in order to do this you have to let go enough right um, very counterintuitive indeed you have more question about that bill no.
Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like the difficulty in uh, letting go sometimes is that it doesn't feel like there's anything that's holding on. So you're, you're trying to let go of uh, the fascia and the muscles and the nerves, but you know, really that biofeedback, it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel like you're clenching, it, you know, so it almost feels like there's not much to let go of or mm. are as relaxed as they can be. Mm -hmm. You almost need to use your imagination to imagine what it would be like if there was another layer of relaxation out there. So I think part of that is recognizing the difference between releasing the nerves and lengthening the fascia. Mm. Is it two mm. different things? Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's because until you can release the nerves, you can't really fully feel the fascia extend and bend. Um, so that's why in a way really getting that kind of basic simple exercise of just feeling that, that yeah. release and the recognizing that once you get that release the arm will just lengthen it just goes and yep. and well we'll talk a little more about this but um at first, when you're working on this, you have to really kind of go through these these uh, three steps of, of releasing the nerves and then being able to, to lengthen out and lengthen in. Um, eventually, it's really uh, virtually simultaneous. Uh, as soon as you, you mm -hmm. have the intention to lengthen, you can do it. <laughs> But uh, that's, it's not going to be that way in the beginning. In the beginning, it's got to be get the nerves released. Okay, they're released. Here we go. <laughs> and <clears throat> then there is the time between. I'm activating my nerves and then letting go. But it'll get faster as you keep working on it. You basically go through these phases. So let's take another thing that we've been working on. But when you talk, uh, as I started to, uh, talking about bending and stretching. And I'm going to So, <clears throat> clearly we've talked about uh, stretching out and bending in, uh, but what we want now is to have this occur because we are able to lengthen the fascia out and in. And so uh, we come back to the, the same thing of having to get a release of the nerves so that um, when you bend out, that can, the fascia can lengthen. And then when you bend in, the fascia bends in and shortens. And it has to do it from the insertion points of the muscles and the fascia and the ligaments. And so one of the things that's really important in, in doing this is, as we, I think, talked about before, is keeping the elbow in a fixed relationship between the scapula 
and you so you want that elbow fixed in place and you could have a different point that you're using as the principal one from which you are uh, bending and stretching or lengthening out and in but it's a little easier at first to just use the elbow so when you start with the elbow <clears throat> and you keep it fixed in one position you can allow everything to bend in and shorten and to extend and lengthen out. And one of the things that can help this is to get a sense that the elbow joint opens slightly and stays open through the whole movement so that you're bending in and you're extending out and you want that release so that the arm actually gets longer. Um, You want to feel uh, the movement from the insertion point. So that's where those, all of those things are attached. So there will be a sense of stretching out and bending back in to those insertion points. Um, one of the other things uh, to be very aware of in well, I'll come, back, I'll come back to that later. I'm jumping ahead here. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, the, the practice here is to really try to make sure that you feel the fascia stretching out and bending back in. So what I'd like you to do is to just, you could do this seated, is to simply um, hold your elbow with the other hand <laughs> so that you, you know that you are uh, keeping uh, your elbow still. And then try to feel the nerves releasing and the fascia extending out and then bending back in. Make sure that you have the elbow joint slightly open. Try the other arm if you've only done one. See if it's different. Sometimes you find that one arm is more easily released than the other.
Don't think too much, just feel. Madam, I think it would help you if you feel everything extend out all the way to the fingertips. What I'm seeing is that you're holding the hand, and that'll tend to block that. Okay. What I was just saying to Adam is that, that you want to really recognize that bending goes all the way from the fingertips through the arm. So when you do this, you don't want to uh, bend and extend and have the hand still in the same position. <laughs> when it goes out, you want it to extend also. You want everything to bend and extend. Okay, so I hope you're beginning to get some sense of that. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's, you know, um, like so many of the elements that we work on in both Qigong and Tai Chi, um, as you continue to practice, and you feel like you go through the stage of uh, maybe yes, maybe no, and then all of a sudden it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, why was Thanks. I having such a problem? <laughs> 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 but it 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 does uh, very often, most of the time, come from practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There there seems to be a point uh, for me. And if I bend the wrist just a little bit too much, it feels the hand feels disembodied. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. uh, it cut off. Mm -hmm. The bend of the wrist is very, very slight. It's very subtle. You're right. You're not. You don't want to bend the wrist because, indeed, if you bend the wrist too sharply, unless you have really learned to open your wrist, um, you will block the flow. Absolutely. So the what whatever happens in the wrist is very slight. It's not big. Not big. At least at this stage. Any other thoughts or questions at the moment? Okay. So now we're gonna look at doing the bending and stretching with the fascia in movement three. So let's consider something else. You've essentially been <clears throat> um, uh, we've been working with the points on the clock. We start with 12 but then we've been going to 3, 6, uh, 9, and 12 again. And there are, however, two ways of doing this. 
And it's kind of up to you which way you want to play it initially. This is going to be a matter of how clearly your mind is inside your body and how clearly it can feel your fascia and how clearly it can feel your insertion points. It's not, if it's not so great, then the easiest thing to do is start at 12 and just stretch through nine, excuse me, through three and keep stretching until you hit six, which is in front of your lower Dantian. So that is a long stretch. And then close or bend, shrinking your fascia to nine and 12. So effectively from 12 to six, you're stretching it outward. And from six to 12, you're stretching it in the opposite direction inward. The way your insertion points work is that this will lengthen from an insertion point, but equally it can lengthen in until it stretches in and goes inside your insertion point. So both of these are doable. So that's the first way. And the second way, of course, is that you Find, when you find that you really only need a 15 minute movement on the clock and that's to get your fascia to stretch in and out and that's better. The half hour to stretch out and in is not as good but it can make it possible and never let the great be the enemy of the good as we're inclined to say. So now what we're looking at is that your hands are going to stretch out to three and then they're going to stretch into six and then out to nine and back into 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The most essential point about all of this is that you can't let go of your insertion points. The place where all this um, fascia as well as your ligaments and as well as your muscles are connected. You can't let this place where the fascia is connected go floppy. You also can't stretch it as far as it can go and then release it and stretch it as far as it can go again. In other words, keep try release and say, oh, you didn't quite get there. I'll try again. No, that doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. Because when you let it go, the non-stretch comes into the part you just worked on. So it has to be continuous. This is very, very important. So eventually, from doing this, in the more advanced parts of this practice, you can literally choose to target the area around a specific internal organ, or you could clearly decide to have it stretch all the fascia around a specific part of your intestines or anything else in your body. Once you get this point of how to grab and how to stretch with, <clears throat> excuse me, which starts with the arms, later on you can apply that same principle when you're doing it with your arms to target any place inside your body but that's more advanced. And of course, we're not quite there yet, but I wanted you to understand the context. So let me just, for a moment. So just to be sure you're clear about what I was saying about those two methods um, of uh, doing this. If you're doing uh, the, the half hour method where you're going to stretch all the way to six and then bend 
all the way back into 12. So that's a different way of doing it than we have mostly practiced so far, but it may allow you the time to find that release out and in. So clearly, um, I'm suggesting you might play with that because it may make it easier, at least for now, uh, to feel that stretch of the fascia as you're doing this. Because when we, when we go to um, doing it at the quarter hour, now you don't have as much time to work on this. So it's a shorter distance and a little bit more difficult. But notice that my elbows are not moving away in terms mm -hmm. of in and out. They are moving out and in, but they're maintaining the distance between my scapula and the elbow. They, they do not collapse or extend out. The, the bending is, it's happening. This, this, these movements, <laughs> this extends the scapula out from the spine. And obviously the arms are extending. But then when they bend in, that movement pushes the scapula in towards the spine. It's bending in and then out and then back in. And of course you have the spine working with that too in its subtlety, particularly at 12. But um, just to be clear that those are both possibilities um, that, that you could work with. Um, So sometimes doing that half hour practice <clears throat> really enables you to really connect with your fascia better than the, doing the 15 minute increments. So some days for some reason you might, which you might not even understand, you may want to do that. And on another day would you might equally not understand you may want to do the 15 minute practice so you need to have the ability to do both mm -hmm. and then you have to simply trust what your body wants to do because it probably understands what you need better than your conscious thinking brain does because your body is taking into account thousands of inputs inside your body and nobody's brain can take in thousands of inputs simultaneously. And another thing that I think is useful about the 15 minute practice or whichever one you end up doing is that you must not lose the contact with your feet because the thing that happens to many people is that when they make the transition, particularly often <clears throat> going to here, they end up losing their balance because you haven't maintained the contact with your feet. And it's easy to think about, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really rooted here on this, on this leg. Oh, but what's that other one doing? I've lifted my arch. Why did I do that? Let it drop. Feel that connection. <laughs> And it's, it's an interesting point here because <clears throat> when you go to, the, to that quarter hour here, you want to be on this new leg 100% so you could lift that foot and put it down. 
but equally you want it firmly rooted into the earth because that's where the energy is coming in. <laughs> it's coming up that leg. So how you connect the feet to the earth is really important. And they need to both be connected, your whole foot, not just, not just a part of it. So <clears throat> stand up again. <laughs> And find your structure and breathe for a minute. <clears throat> and at the moment, I'm going to have you do the 15 minute practice starting at 12. And I want you to stretch, lengthen to three. And when you get there, just pause. And really feel how your feet are connected to the earth, particularly your back foot. Make sure it's fully connected. And also it should be weightless, but energetically connected. You can test that by picking your foot up and putting it down and just seeing whether you're, if you have to, if your weight falls back on the foot, you aren't a hundred percent on the other side. Feel a clear transference of the energy through your entire body. And now go to six and pause, bending in, lengthening in. I might mention that the deeper you go, the more benefit there is to this exercise. Feel your weight equally on both feet, lengthening in. Your palms have twisted in, putting your energy inside your lower Dantian. And now stretch to nine. And make sure that you're looking through the space in the middle between your hands. And you should be able to see what's around you. You don't want to be looking at the floor. You want to be able to see through the center of your palms and everything else that's around you. And then bend and return to 12. And as you're coming back and you're turning, make sure that your feet stay on the ground, that you don't lose your balance. Now go in the opposite direction. Go to nine, pause. Make sure your breath is stable and that you're connected to the floor. Now go to six. Are you still stable in your, is your breath smooth? Have you lengthened in? Now extend out to three. And 
you should be 100% on that one foot. But firmly connected to the earth. Focus on your Dantian as your center. Now go to 12. Now continue for a moment, but as you come to each quarter of the clock, just take it to pause of a count of three and then move on. This way the inside of your body is understanding what it needs to do to smooth out all the flows. before you continue in the movement. Once your body understands how to do it, you should be able to go right through it. Do a couple in the other direction. Feel your fascia lengthening. And then begin to flow. Once your body understands how to do it, you should be able to go right through it. Try not to pause or count, just keep it smooth and very easy. But internally, check yourself at each quadrant. Remember to keep your elbow at the same distance from the scapula. The bend is only bending out from the elbow, and the, but the fascia is bending all the way from the spine. And if you haven't changed direction, that would be good.
Okay. So complete this one and pause. Relax. So you do your beginning to make those connections. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think beginning to make it. Uh, not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's felt harder to keep feeling the insertion points doing the full movement mm -hmm. while staying focused on the feet. Yep. I felt like I was mm -hmm. either losing the feet or losing the insertion points. Mm. So, pointing the fact that you may need to do some practice of with mm -hmm. just one focus for a while and yeah. then, then the other. Yeah. Mm. Other other questions about this? Mm. Kind of uh, redefines three for me. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, we'll keep redefining it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that was sure of. <laughs> I hate to say that's a promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is. Just the way it is. <laughs> but good. Good. You can't just jump into the deep end, I guess. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no. No. Darn. <laughs> processed. Processed. Yeah. Okay, well, any other last minute thoughts or questions? No. Great. Thank you. David. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Have a good day. I'll be day. right back. Thank okay. you. See you all. See you, Bill. Bye. Bye. The things in your world. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's better than bad. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Just busy. Yeah. We're always busy, it seems like. You know? That's just the way it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's tough to get rid of, rid of the busyness. You know, I feel like you're always busy, but not necessarily getting things done. So. <laughs> Or it never ends anyway. Oh, maybe that's really what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we've kind of decided with our tenant that we're doing it month to month. Yeah. I guess I mentioned that. Um, he seems okay with that, so. Yeah, I, I think that's probably good. Um, I feel like as the landlord, you don't really have much security with the lease anyways. You know, if the person's going to go and end it early, they're just going to go. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, you know, there, there's some, I guess, legal precedent, right, that you can try and go after them for the rest of the money of the lease, but it's difficult time consuming, costly, and not worth the effort for yeah. what ends up being not a whole lot amount of money. Yeah. So really there's there's not a lot of hold there's not a lot that holds them to the lease, but then it also obligates you to let them stay there even if they're not paying rent because it's difficult to evict them if they have the lease and protecting them. So it's yep. I don't know, it almost seems to behoove you to just do the month to month because then if there's a problem it's much easier to say like, hey, the lease is over. Like this person's got to go. Yeah. Like, they don't. They don't have a lease. There's no protection. Uh, so I don't know. We, That's kind uh, of what I'm doing too, month to month. Yeah. Our our tenant just went through a 
hard period and uh, we almost <laughs> oh yeah said <laughs> but we're we're back to friends briefly anyway mm -hmm. he's back to work which is good so good. so um the Wu style obviously employs this same mm. thing. <laughs> and um, I was thinking about it in, in uh, relation to practicing slowly. <laughs> yes. As yes. we're talking about. Um, and it's it's really um, it's really uh, at least I think it it's really helpful to to do that to take the time mm -hmm. um, So it, the same principles about the elbow definitely mm. still exist um, in all of this. Mm. And you, um, I don't know if you, to what extent you have a sense of opening and closing and lengthening out and in, but that's happening Ideally, that's how this form begins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that um, when you begin to reach a point where you can connect into that, you begin to just open and close. And even though that movement may not be very large, you begin lengthening in and lengthening out because basically opening and closing is using the same principles mm -hmm. as lengthening in and out. And then when you're ready to begin, you're lengthening out first, then in, Out, in, out, in, out. Just a little mm -hmm. bit first part. So slowing it down so that you can really begin to feel that movement, mm -hmm. subtle as it may be, or shorter or long as it may be. Um, I think is really important here. Mm. Because the lengthening goes with and really makes possible the, the flow of the energy through opening and closing. So it's a really, uh, I think it's really a good thing to do. So um, I was going to suggest you just try a little bit of the Sure. Um, mm -hmm. You want the first paragraph? Well, yeah, that's what you're most comfortable with at the moment, I think, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and that I did practice that slowly a few times this week. Uh huh. So it's um, yeah, a little frustrating sometimes, but also uh, really good. <laughs> Yeah. That way. <laughs> <laughs> More frustrating is the word, but I'm impatient. Mm. Mm. Space I have here for you to see me. I didn't really set up for this, but let's see what I can do here.
<clears throat> so what what was your reaction to doing that? I don't know, maybe sixty percent there. <laughs> <laughs> some some good moments. Um I think uh losing it in places. Mm -hmm. I think uh just sort of like we were talking about with God's some some points do it all and other points kind of losing connection with the feet or losing connection with the insertion points mm -hmm. um, found um, the, the hand positions that were kind of up above the shoulder mm -hmm. difficult to keep connection with the insertion points mm -hmm. um, yeah I, I think that kind of a little bit more extreme twisting of the arm mm -hmm. I'll lose that a little bit. Um, and uh, I felt a speed mismatch between the upper and lower body that it's mm -hmm. easier to go slower with the upper body. Mm -hmm. But there are def <laughs> definitely challenging points in the lower body. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, uh, the other thing, too, is that I could see in watching this, um, both of you, is keeping, uh, wh whatever, lengthening, stretching, bending, keeping all of it continuous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that gets really pointed out to you all of a sudden when you're doing this. It's, oh. I need to keep doing something here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's another, I think, benefit of the slow practice. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, uh, I saw it clearly with you, and I'm not, I will say I'm not sure, um, Joanne, but that is remember that after you've gone. after you've gone to, to Pung, that there is an in yep. and out. Uh -huh. um, and it's short. If you're going quickly, it's almost... You know, I'm see, yeah. See it. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but it needs to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know that this would be true for either one of you, but um, not getting stuck that a certain edge of the hand has to be going out. It could be the opposite. Mm -hmm. But uh, the twist yeah. likewise has to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, yeah, it's, mm. there's a lot there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no there's problem. a lot there. I mean, we have a lot to build on, but it, it, you, you do see and experience it differently every time you uh, learn more and, and focus on that. Mm. Good. So, um, any other questions or thoughts at the moment? Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think so. I think that um, I, I have the same experience Adam had in terms of kind of the upper and lower bodies. And I think I, my lower body probably kept a faster pace than I wanted to, mostly because of my knees, um, mm -hmm. not wanting to put too much pressure on them. So, um, but it, 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 the, while we are taking lessons from gods um, and, and and moving it into the flow, because there's so much more movement on the bottom half of uh, of our bodies, then that really is different and different in a good way. Because I think I, even in the in in gods, yes, in gods, I I still kind of ignore the bottom half sometimes. So, 
Uh, just, just a reminder that you can't. <laughs> I mean, I know that. It's like I know that intellectually, but um, yeah, it it's very easy to make that switch to the upper body, but yeah, the lower body is is really important. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. So this is a good reminder of that. Yeah. It is good. Good. Well, have a good week. Onward. We'll do more. Yes. Keep slowing it down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good week. Bye-bye, Adam. Bye. Have a good week. We'll, we'll hope the world holds together for another week. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Who's shooting who and who's bombing who? And yeah. <laughs> uh, Seems like that's moved back a little. They're saying, no, 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 it wasn't Russia. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, that's the problem with war, right? Yeah. Things happen is the consequences of war. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Good. And yeah, that'll be next. Yeah, next Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. So. Yep. And then things will have calmed down for at least my work life. I hope. All yeah. right. Bye bye. At least for a day. <laughs> at least for. <laughs> Although we have twenty people, we're not. Go we're going to Patrick's house. Oh my God. Yeah. So. Oh. That will be. That'll be. <laughs> Have a good time, I hope. Thank you. I, hope, I think I will. Okay. All right. See you next week. All righty. Bye. Bye. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs>